Uh, so this is the outline of today's talk. So we are going through uh, three Kaggle competitions on, at on click prediction. Right? So the first is the display uh, advertising challenge. I think it's a very popular competition by criteria uh, uh, on the uh, competition. And then the second one is the outbrain click prediction. And then the third is a uh, uh, click through rate prediction. So let's first go to the first one. So the first one, uh, uh, so this is the web change. So you see that it's uh, happening actually five, seven years ago. And uh, the goal of this competition is to um, predict whether that uh, user is going to click on a given ad. Uh, and the information or the context uh, of that uh, ad is the user, like who is the user and also what page he's visiting. And this is a data set. So you have the label is whether or not you have clicked that ad, right? So it's just one or zero uh, label. And then you have this L1 to L13. So these are all kind of integer values. So they said they are mostly count values. And you also have like C1 to C26. So these are more kind of categorical uh, values over there. So you see that uh, they kind of uh, uh, remove the actual name and value out of that for um, for safety, for the user safety issues, right? So, so you, you just see the, 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 you know, after the transformation, you just see these uh, integers and you see these some random streams after the mockup. So in the training data, we have like 45 million and the test we need to predict for 6 million. Uh, and you see that features after one hot encoding is a lot, it's like 33 million. So it's like lots of combination in the features. And, uh, and yeah, I would say it's a very sparse uh, prediction, right? And then the metric for the competition is the log loss. I think it's a very popular metric for uh, binary prediction. Right, so it's just one or zero. And then the yi, so it's a true label, is like zero one. And then this yi hat is kind of the estimated probability. So as you can see, if the label is one and you, if you, and you also predict the probability of one, the loss will be zero, right? So it's, uh, it's kind of, uh, uh, kind of describe like whether you can predict the high probability for the for the label of one and predict the low probability for the label of zero. Okay, so that's the information about the competition, about the data and the metric. And next, uh, I I look through all the posts on the discussion forum. And then I find that the first place solution actually got a very good documentation and codes also. So if you are interested in looking into the codes, feel free to uh, check the, the discussions on this competition page. And it's by the three idiots. <laughs> yeah, it's a single, very good name uh, for the team. And you see, so this is the kind of the workflow uh, they propose. Uh, that they use to win this competition, right? So the input is uh, the CSV data file, and then they do some pre-processing of the data, and that gives you uh, 39 features. Uh, and then they use the GBDT, so it's a gradient boosted decision tree. So we usually use this tree to train the models, but they come up with this tree to generate the, 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 the features. Uh, for the data to transform the, the data. So that gives you some additional features, which I will introduce in detail in the next slides about how they use this tree to uh, generate the features. Uh, and then they do some another round of processing of the features. And that's the output uh, into, uh, into this uh, FFM. So I think this is the one of the most popular models in ad click prediction. So it's called a field factorization machine. Uh, 
uh, and then they do some calibration to adjust their output values, and then that's the final result. So let's go through this step. Uh, so first here, so as you I have introduced earlier in the data set, well, you have 13 numerical features and 26 uh, categorical features. So that totally gives you uh, 39 features. And actually it's very sparse, right? So if you just use one hot encoding, it's like 33, 33 million, right? So it's, uh, it's a lot. Uh, so they come up with a very smart strategy like using the decision tree to transform the feature. I say uh, decision tree, well, the, the GBDT tree uh, is basically just train an uh, iterative set of trees. And each tree will uh, learn or learn to predict the residuals from the last tree. I right? say in the beginning, you just train one tree and then you get some loss comparing to the target variable. And then you put the, train the second tree to reduce the loss or error. And as, uh, as such, iteratively, until you train enough trees, like it's a parameter, right? So here in this example, you just train, you set the number to be three trees. So you just train three trees iteratively and you set the depth to be two. So you, in the end, you will get uh, four leaf nodes, right? So the depth is two and four leaf nodes. And once you input into the X uh, and then, in the end, the X will go to the leaf of the tree. Right? So you input your feature vector, and then for the first tree, you end up with leaf node four, and the second tree, you end up with leaf node seven as such. Right? And, then, and then this kind of naturally gives the encoding for the features. Right? So you, for this X, you got uh, encoding of the first tree, fourth leaf node, the second tree, seventh leaf node, and then the third tree, six. Uh, leave note like this. Uh, so you you so for that very long, very sparse feature vector, you kind of encode it with this uh, with this uh, kind of more dense format of the tree uh, of that uh, information. Uh, okay, and uh, so that's uh, using the the gradient boosted decision tree. So any question or comment over here? Okay, uh, let's move on. So uh, throughout the tree, so you can see the features become 30 multiplied by two to the seventh. So 30 is the number of trees, right? So you have 30 trees, and then for each tree, you have a depth of seven. So that is basically the number of leaf nodes uh, over there. So you have 30 multiplied by two to the seventh after the GBM or GBDT training. And then you go through another processing of the features. Well, you log transform all the numerical features. And for all the 26 categorical features, if, if the value is very rare, say uh, they have like smaller than 10 values, you just group them together and give them uh, a value, like say a real group, right? So you just group all, all of them together and give them a, a value. And then for, and then you also generate because you have trained 30 trees uh, that gives you a 30 kind of these features. Uh, and then put all, them, all of them together gives you a 26, uh, 69 features. Uh, and then they do a, a hashing tree because some of the features are text, right? So, you know, of different lands and as such. So they use the hashing function to transform the text into the uh, uh, integers. Right. So again, I will introduce on the next slide. So this is the hashing tree. So they design a hash function. Well, you basically, the input is the text and then the output is uh, some hash value. Right. So for example, this is the first tree, third leaf node, and this is for the categorical feature one and you've got this uh, string number. Oh, sorry. So this is the first numerical feature, the number is three. And then this is the categorical, the first categorical feature, and you got this string number. And this is that the tree encoding of the features, right? The first tree and the new flow is 173. And then through the hash values, you got this long kind of uh, integers. 
uh, uh, to, to represent this text. And then they do a mod of uh, six to the 10, six, 10 to the six. And then that gives, that gives your final uh, feature representations for that. Okay, so the, I, I think the hashing is kind of uh, further compress the, the space, right? So you got lots of values, you know, uh, basically like over minions. And then this is you kind of further compress them into like below uh, 100, yeah, below one million. Right? So you um, kind of further compress the feature and also make sure that all the feature kind of follow the same uh, format. Kind of, uh, it's, uh, I believe this way it also saves you uh, like the space and also the management uh, for the training. So that's all on the features input. And then let me uh, next to introduce more about the FFM. So it's called a field aware factorization machines. Uh, so I think the, maybe you, you have heard about the factorization machine, right? So it's basically kind of like the matrix decomposition uh, type, uh, like that, for example, like this, right? So. Uh, for this uh, factorization machine, so you kind of de decompose your target matrix into or uh, like this uh, inner product of these uh, feature vectors, and then and then you learn the weights. So the model is to learn the weights, right? So the this W is what you are trying to figure out. Um, so it's a kind of a weighted uh, sum of all the feature vectors. So these are the, the two vectors with the nice of k and uh, and then uh, yeah so you 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 can specify what the the length of k is and this is the inner product of these two vectors. So the factorization machine I think it's uh it's uh, very straightforward and then what then what's the result like what's field aware right so. Uh, you see that for this J1 and J2, it adds additional like F2 and F1. So F1 and F2 are the fields of J1 and J2. Right? So you, you kind of uh, end up more uh, weight uh, vectors. So you kind of end up more uh, because like you add, um, add in this uh, fields. So what are the fields? Right? So I think in the next example, uh, I will illustrate this. Say you have this uh, a movie data set, like the movie nest data set, right? So you have the users' movies and you have the type of the movies and also uh, at what price the user watch that movie. So these are the fields. So the field is kind of like the feature name, right? So you, you encode them with like one, two, three, four. And then the feature, uh, so this should be the feature value name. So this is the field, they call it the field name, right? So just user movie type and price. And the feature name or the feature value name, right? So within each field, you got a set of values, right? So user is who and what movies. And then the, the, you see the type uh, for the genuine and you have the comedy and drama, right? So both of these values belong to the to the field three, right? They all come from field three. And then the price itself was uh, additional, some features. Uh, so you, you, you want to encode this information as, so the red one is the field, so one, one. So the field is from one, and then the value is also feature one. And then the, the value of that is one. So you, you just use a one hot encoding. Uh, for that uh, category, uh, for this categorical feature, right? And then the, for the for the uh, field three, so you can see the field three over here, and then you have the type comedy, so three three, uh, and also you from the field three, you also have the feature four, so the three four is one, and in the end, the price is from field four and feature five, right? And then the price is the numerical value, which is uh, Point nine. Right, so this is the, how you use this uh, field to encode your features. Right? So you have the field and you have the values um, for that. Right? So just remember this uh, user movie uh, example, I think then it will be very 
uh, clear to understand the field aware factorization machine. So this is like uh, if we uh, roll, roll out that formula, and then you can see that for the factorization machine, you will be just using the feature value, right? So it's all blue. You see the indices is all blue. So it's like, the, because the value is one, so it's the interaction of the feature value one and feature value two. And then you learn the weights like W1, W2 and such. So this is for the factorization machine. And then for the field aware, we, we also exchange their, exchange their fields, right? And then for two, uh, we know uh, for the feature value two is also from the field two. So the, the field is also ex exchanged uh, over here. So you can see that with the field aware factorization machine, you actually train more uh, vectors, right? You train more Ws over here. And also it incorporates the the, the feature information that which groups of feature that belongs to the or represent the same type of information. Okay. Uh, so that's the model they use. And then once they train the, the field aware factorization machine and gives the outputs, they also compare their results with the public and private leaderboard averages the click-through rates. And they, they find that theirs is uh, a little bit uh, higher uh, than the averages uh, on the leaderboards. So, so, they, so, they just, so this is a, just a very practical trick. Right? So just think that maybe there's some bats introduced in the, in the processing. They just minus each prediction by 0 0.003. And you know, you know that the, the, the improvement is minor, but I, I guess it's, it's still important to get to the top first rank uh, competition, but uh, maybe it's not that necessary uh, for, the, uh, for the real world deployment. Who knows that the loss is uh, random or is a true improvement. Right, so I guess here's uh, some lucky uh, practical uh, tree tip. So this, this is their final results. So this is another type of uh, kind of a linear regression type of uh, method. Uh, and this is a loss on the public leaderboard and the loss, lock loss on the private leaderboard. So this is just using the FF, FFM alone. And this is using the G, GBDT, the gradient boosted decision tree features. Right. And then this is another tree features using more trees uh, over there. So this tree, I guess, using uh, 30 trees. Well, this one is using more trees and shallower, shallower trees. And then this is like with the tree, but with some uh, collaborations. So you can see that the major improvement is already do, done by the FF map and all of the rest is kind of doing these small uh, incremental improvements on top of FFM. Yeah, so that's uh, the first competition. So any questions on this first one? Okay, uh, 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 yeah, so if you, uh, thank you. If you have any questions, so feel free to unmute yourself anytime and uh, uh, just for the feature engineering. Uh, and then the second one is uh, outbrain click prediction. Right? So it's, uh, it's recommending content on the news channel. Right? So it's, uh, uh, I think the outbrain just go their IPO recently. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, so it's a content uh, discovery platform. And uh, so this is what they recommend, right? Say you are on a CNN, 
a website and you are reading your news article and then it will comes up with this uh, pop out, uh, not pop out, actually it's an embedded uh, GUI in there and it shows this is the paid content they want to promote. So it can be in some articles or docs or some ad from other website. Right. So this is, uh, uh, and uh, yeah. So you include some ad or news or some other content they want to promote to you. So you can see that whether the user will click on this uh, content well, it depends on how this content is relevant, maybe to this news that they're, they're, they're reading or how, how they are interested, whether the user is interested to this. Right? So you need to kind of best guess what the user uh, likes or, or want to read next. So yeah, the data is uh, very complicated as in this competition. <laughs> they provide you lots of very rich information there. So overall, uh, the data includes the user's uh, page views and clicks. Right? So they gives you uh, kind of like two, two weeks data. And then on each of uh, views, on each document, so the document is basically news articles, uh, a set of ad uh, display. So they also tell you the ad ID, like which ads are displayed over there. So for each page view, so this is the user ID, and this is the document ID, it's the news article, and then this is a time, like when they read this, and then the platform that they view this uh, desktop, mobile, or tablet. And then this is the location where they are located, so is that a country, state, or DMA? So the DMA is the designed market areas. Right? So I think in California it has 12. It just gives the approximate number of how many market areas per state. So uh, about around like 10 uh, market areas per state. And then this is a traffic source. So like how they got this uh, this news, right? So this is more like the historical views by specific user. And then in the click data, in the training data, so they just uh, provide you a display ID, or ad ID, and whether or not that ad is uh, clicked. And then for each display ID and ad ID, they also provide you some metadata for that information. Right? So for the display ID, they tell you which user on, on what news article, uh, when and uh, what platform and location. Right? So it's kind of very similar to, to the. So this is the historical views. So this is the uh, matter information for the display, for the ad click, for each ad click uh, data. And then for each ad, we also, we, we also need to know like for that ad link, what document ID it ends up, right? So if you click that ad, then what document document uh, I, a document you that user is going to end up with viewing, and then this is a campaign and advertiser for that ad. So this is to enrich that click data set, uh, and also very uh, interesting is they give you some meta information about the news about the documents. Right. So for each document ID, we also know on what site that document is displayed. So like a CNN website or some uh, like New York Times website, like, like what publisher channel site uh, that document is displayed. We we'll also know the publisher and the publish, publish time. And then for each uh, news documents, they also provide you the topics, entities, and categories. So that kind of tell you the uh, uh, content that document is about. Uh, and especially the entities. So they, they uh, for example, that uh, news is about politics, right? So that politics, well, you can have a list of politic entities there, like who that news is related to and where. Right, and about uh, what topic. And then this, they, they also gives you a confidence score uh, to assign that entity to that document. So this factor, well, I think well represents uh, what that uh, document is about. 
So you see the information of probability is very rich. Um, uh, and then for the metric, so earlier we see that for the uh, earlier prediction, it's uh, one or zero. So and and we use the log loss right here. So here they are using a mean average precision at uh, 12. So it's kind of like gives you 12 spots, like 12, top 12, and then what's your average precision? So here's the example. Uh, say, well, you can forget about the dates. So just, just, you just focus on the colors over here. So say the green one is the true. Uh, you predict accurately at the first position. And then for the second one, well, you give the wrong uh, prediction. And the third one is, uh, is uh, true again. So, you, you, so this is the final, uh, say this is the top 30, and you give the top 30 output in your, uh, in your prediction, and then it will check whether, whether or not this is um, clicked or viewed by the user, right? And then you calculate the precision for this. Right, so the first one will be one. And then the, for the second one, define strong. If it's wrong, then it's just zero. And then the first, for the third one, you have till the, till the third a place, you have guessed twice, correct? And then the precision will be two divided by three. And then four is zero again, and fifth is this. And then the average precision at five, say you stop over here, and then will be uh, so there are like three, three uh, correct, three greens over here. So one over third, and then you sum this uh, more up. Right? So it's basically you sum up like one over one, two over three, and three over five. And that's your average precision at five. So you can see that if you put the greens like all to the top, right? So if you uh, got like the top, you got correct at the top three positions, the average uh, precision at five will be one. And so this is, uh, so this is kind of like uh, represents how well your prediction is comparing to the, to the true rank, to the rank. So this is the average precision at, uh, at K. And then for the mean, then, then for sure is that you need to iterate through all the users or iterate through all the, all the document, right? So it's like uh, you, you calculate this specifically, specifically for each document and you just average through all the documents or the displays uh, in this uh, competition. Mm -hmm. uh, so so uh, here I just show the third place solution. And actually for this competition, uh, still is the war of FFM. <laughs> so if you uh, read that this uh, discussion forum and people saying, oh, this is, this is another war of FFM. So people still use FFM. And actually the top positions are still very close. And I think I favor the third one because of their feature extraction. So they have the feature extraction and then they had trained two layers of models and then stacking them together, right? So the first la layer model will be the FFM with two different losses. One is the soft max loss for the click probability prediction. And then the pairwise rank loss is for the ranking. Right? So, and then XG boost can be also trained with the pairwise rank loss. So you have these three models and the second layer is again actually boost to learn to combine combine all of this together. And on the page uh, feature extraction, like in addition to all the original features provided, uh, they also extract these additional features. Right? For example, like for each user, what's the page view counts, and then for each ad that. Uh, after you click that ad, you end up with the news. And then for each ad landing page, what's the, what's the total page view counts for that? Uh, that kind of uh, describes about like how the user, uh, how much the user intend to read and also how popular that landing page is. Right? Uh, and then they also do the impression counts for each uh, ad ID, document ID, campaign and advertiser. 
right? So this is just impression count, kind of like how, how many times they have shown show up in the past in the data. Uh, uh, remember that we also have that confidence vector that represents the content of that document, right? So it's a vector that like each element is composed of confidence level from the documents. Uh, uh, so we get this uh, confidence uh, vector for the ad landing page. We also aggregate these document confidence vectors for the user, right? Because the user, we have the page views a uh, history for the user. So we can do an average of all the document, historical document uh, vectors for the user. So I think this represents the user's preference or the topics the user likes in history. And then later on, you can do an inner product of the document vector uh, and the, the, the ad landing page. So this is computing the similarity between the doc, uh, between the document that the user is reading now and uh, the, the document that the ad is leading to, right? So it's comparing two pages, like what's their similarities, and then do another in the doc product uh, between the user confidence vector, so what the user likes, and then what's that ad is about, right? Like, so this indicates uh, the, the chance that the user likes that ad or want to read about that promoted content. And again, they also try the XGB lead for the FM, FFM feature. Right? So it's the same idea earlier, like you, they use the lead to encode the features. Yeah, so this is their models. Uh, uh, yeah, so as I have said before, like they, they also use the FFM and then they especially mentioned they use the live version of FFM that will save you the memory of training. Uh, yeah, the data is quite huge with lots of features. And also this uh, library has a pairwise rank uh, and they, they use that. And then the final score is around this like 0.69. So remember that uh, average mean, uh, the mean average precision, right? So if it's closer to one, then it's better, right? Uh, and then for the XG boost, uh, you see is uh, you can also train a XG boost with the pairwise, rank pairwise loss. And then the best score is like 0.68. So, uh, uh, so it's, uh, it seems that FFM performance are better than, than the XG boost in this scenario. And then later on, they train another XG boost to combine these two results. Yeah, so this is the, the, the second competition. And what I like most is how they, for example, the uh, how you, kind of aggregate or learn the user vectors from the historical reads of this user. Uh, so any comments? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Uh, yes, so definitely marketing time will be helpful too. I think they, they, they should use the time as a, a numerical or continuous feature there. Because I think we have a different mood <laughs> for what content we want to read at different times. Okay, so let's move on to the third one. So the third one is again uh, um, to predict whether a mobile ad will be clicked. So it's online advertising. Uh, yeah, so uh, the, the, the click prediction are you know are widely used for sponsor search and real-time bidding. So again, uh, same as before, let's see what data they provide. 
Uh, so the first is the add. So it's the add identifier ID and whether or not it's clicked. And our, yeah, so the time I think is very really important here. So here it just shows the, the two of the hour. Okay, so year, month, day, and hour. Uh, and then also anonymized uh, some categorical variables. And then this is the banner position of, of where that ad is displayed. And then this is the site. So what's the site domain and category? What's the app uh, is, uh, they are viewing on? And what's the device? What type of device they are using on? They also have some device ID. So you can use the device ID as a user uh, ID kind of. And then they have some further uh, anonymized uh, categorical variables. Yeah, most of these competitions, because it's commercial data and they usually uh, anonymized this data before like publish them for these open uh, competitions. The metric, yeah, I think we are familiar with this now. It's the same, it's using the log loss uh, for this competition, right? So remember that if you uh, predict probability of one for the right, for the, for the click of one, you will get log loss. So, uh, and also you predict zero, uh, you predict zero for the y, when y equals zero, and then you got a log loss of zero. Uh, it measures how well your probability matches with your zero or one labels. Uh, and again, the first play belongs to the idiots. <laughs> so the first competition, well, it's uh, three years and it seems that they recruit another idiots to become four idiots. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I think also this team uh, event that FFM one, one library for the FFM and then it becomes very popular and I have to, they, they use that FFM to win many competitions. And of course, they are also very good at uh, feature engineering and this hashing trick. Uh, I think the main difference from the first one is they, they do lots of feature engineering. They, they're still using the hashing trick and also they do the examples, right? So they train 20 models by using different subsets or uh, subsets of data by, uh, or features. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, and also different uh, subsets of model configurations that gives you uh, end up with like, they select 20 models in the end for the example. Uh, so for the feature engineering, so except for the raw features that are already provided, they also uh, generate these additional features such as like the countings, the back features and click history. So here is the example of that. So the count features, it just like count uh, in the data, how many for each IP and each ID, what's the count present in the data and also like the hourly user count, right? So how many, like during one hour, how many users are kind of showing the traffic right to the site, uh, uh, the total user count and also the uh, hourly impression count of the ad. And then for each user, the user is defined as the device ID, right? And or if the device ID is this, I guess this is some maybe some random assignment uh, of unknown, unknown user or unknown device ID and then you can, uh, Def refine that by defining the user as the device IP plus the device model. It's just approximate of the device ID. Uh, so the uh, impression or uh, the, the final vector is, uh, the vector or feature vector is defined as concatenating all raw features together. Uh, so this is the counts. So they do lots of statistical counts of this uh, device. And then they also do uh, backs. So backs is like group the feature values together, right? Say for example, this user viewing this app, uh, user one also view, viewing the app of B 
and then the back of them will be A and B, right? So this is like all the apps the user has been uh, viewed or used on their mobile, right? So it's uh, A, B, so you just concatenate them together. And then you also do that for the second user, user two, so it's viewing different app. Right? So this is just concatenate all the, all the apps the, the user is viewing. Uh, um, and then the click history feature, uh, I think they, they organized all the history for specific user. And then you got uh, encoding of zero and ones, right? So if you order them by, say, by time um, for each user, and then you will see the click, kind of the click pattern. <laughs> Right, so the click uh, zero and every now and then you see a click of one. Right? So uh, say for the first row of the history, the history will be none. There's no prior time history. And then for, for, for the next row, uh, you just use the earlier rows, right? So you got a label of zero. And then for the second row, you got a history of zero and one. And then for the first row, you got a zero, one, one. Right? So that's your history of clicks. Uh, it's just a string of uh, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 right? So it's kind of like the click pattern of the user. Uh, and again, they use the hashing trick to transform these text features. Uh, so this is a text where we have the feature and uh, this uh, random, this uh, anonymized uh, number uh, value for that uh, feature. And then the hash function is just it just um, um, map them into some uh, these non integer values, and you take a mod. So that is your end up uh, features that you are going to use in the end. Uh, so again, they are using FFM. Right? So as I have introduced earlier in the slides, like so this what. Uh, remember that uh, movie user example, right? So the, the field is the movie type, uh, and then the feature values are as the, like the comedy or documentary uh, fantasy movies. So these are the feature, feature values there. Uh, and again, all the, all the examples are taken from this uh, slide. So. Yeah, so this is the form formulation of the factorization machine and also the field aware factorization machine where you put this uh, uh, movie, movie type there, like attached to each feature value. Yeah. Uh, it's very interesting that for the example, as they, 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 they didn't take a straightforward uh, average. Uh, so like by using different settings of subsets of data, different uh, feature engineering, and, uh, and also the FFM, different FFM uh, configuration models, they build uh, 20 models. Uh, and then the, the average is, I think it's very similar to a geometric average, but they use the logistic function, right? They use, they first apply an inverse logistic function and then this inverse logistic function is basically map any value between zero and one to, to negative infinity to uh, till positive infinity. So you just do an inverse, so this is a functional form. And then you first inverse them and then take the average and then you apply the logistic function to convert them back to a probability. Uh, I think the advantage of using this type of uh, average it's mainly, I think it's more catered to the log loss, right? So it's a, it's a log form of the loss. So uh, by taking uh, the inverse, take the average and do the original functional form, you, I think it's, it's a more better uh, fit the uh, log loss that the model is evaluated on. Uh, so in their conclusion is the, they find that FFM is still a very effective model. Uh, but they also said their competitors are also using FFM. So it's not the key. 
uh, I think the key is that the feature engineering and the ensemble. So they, they generate those accounts, backs, uh, and, and the user click history. Uh, and also that, uh, yeah, so the ensemble, their ensemble is basically just blending the same model uh, from different subsets of data and features. So this is the third competition. So I think you can see the the FFM <laughs> is uh, you know keeps keeps uh, um, pushing for the for the top rank for all these three competitions. And also remember that all these competitions are happening five years ago. So so I would say maybe if you push the competition now, you will end up maybe. A, little bit like say deep learning method or that, but I, but I feel that FFM is still a very effective and quick model to uh, to use for the for this type of problem. So any questions on this one? Uh, <laughs> uh, and then the conclusion is, well, I, I think as you see here, just like the XG boost, right? So GBM is very popular for, uh, for all kinds of like prediction competition on Kaggle. Uh, and but our, our ad click prediction seems the FFM is the most popular model here. And the feature engineering is still very important for this uh, improvement. Uh, and also we see that for the, for the feature transformation or the data transformation, actually the GBM is got used or XGBoost got used for to encode the features, the sparse feature vectors. And also the hashing functions are used to transform the text into the integers. Right, so this is the, what I learned most from these three competitions. And I know that you know after five years it can be totally a different story, uh, uh, especially with the wide adoption of the deep learning. So if you are interested in the what is happening right now with the ad click, uh, I think you can check the uh, ad ad KDD. I think it's a workshop every year with the KDD uh, conference. So KDD is a top. I think it's a top first conference for uh, research and applied data science. And associated with, associated with it, it has this uh, at KDD workshop. Uh, and I think they have uploaded uh, their paper representations for the past years, including this year, just happened last week. <laughs> so if you, uh, I think on YouTube, if you just search the at KDD channel, you should be able to see all these uh, presentations and get an idea of what is happening right now with this in this area. <laughs>